Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to my short videos about setting up my new machine uh, with the focus on the ZX Spectrum Next development so it's mostly about retro 8-bit computing but not only, uh, you can set up your Linux machine in similar fashion also for developing other kind of projects. In the previous video we did uh, check how to build the SJ Assembler Plus from the sources, uh, downloading them from the GitHub webpage. So now I have the SJ Assembler working and installed and uh, I will now take a look uh, how to edit and build uh, assembler projects for ZX Spectrum Next. So, um, um, I will try to build a particular test from the test suite and uh, I have this one already cloned on the disk, so let's go into the test. Here is the cloned project, and here are the sources of the of the various tests. And I will use, for example, graphics next register sixty nine. So here is the source in the file main ISM. Uh, oh. I have already the SJ assembler tools installed as command line tool, so I can do now this. and as you can see it will report the assembling status it did end with uh, zero error errors zero warnings took tremendous uh, 13 thousands of second and now when i will switch back uh, to the file commander uh, i can see the snapshot file in the same directory so that's uh, building with uh, this command line. Yeah, but uh, I prefer to build my sources directly from the text editor. So what I will do now is, uh, is I will just try to open the file. What happens? and it does open in the curve right application which is the default uh, TDA5 text editor it's not bad but uh, I'm I'm preferring the Kate editor which is even more extended text editor in TDA5 so I will close this one And uh, I will install now. Will install now the Kate. I will again use the text UI of the Aptitude, the package manager. I prefer personally. Okay. And here I will search for Kate. Um, that's the that's it, the powerful text editor I believe so so let's install it yeah okay and now I have the text editor Kate somewhere 
so I can do open with skate already it's offering it does it do it yeah it does it do as new default uh, but uh, if it wouldn't be new default I could do open with other application Kate and mark it as remember application for all types of type plain text document so this way I have now the Kate as default uh, editor for text documents so far so good and uh, yeah I also prefer to have the session so it will uh, yeah, I did open new session but it's not completely planned but yeah but anyway I will do save session as use my name or nickname and uh, now I have this session here so uh, this works uh, between uh, between starting and finishing the editor between various sessions so it will remember all my files uh, which are open and uh, positions and some settings of plugins so that's why I'm using this. Okay, uh, and uh, this can be also started by I don't don't have it set now. No, not yet. Okay, I will show it later. Uh, so now I have the assembler file in the Kate editor and uh, this this has already some syntax highlight as you can see there are some colors that's kinda nice but it's the SMA 6502 so, so it's uh, destined for different kind of assembler with different syntax and uh, it's not completely correct highlight while I will be doing the Z80 assembler with the SJ assembler and uh, the SJ assembler has its own syntax highlight file uh, for Kate because I'm using I'm contributing to this SJ assembler plus and I'm using Kate editor so I did create the syntax highlight file uh, it should be somewhere around here this one So install it locally into a TDA5 environment. I need to copy it to this folder. All right. So I will do copy. into the folder and there is no such folder yet so let's create it or uh, I mean let's see first how far it goes because I would sort of expect it already there I'm checking if there's some change in the naming and maybe there is because there is Kate now and no that's session file yeah I think I will try the the 
original suggested directory so let's first create it and now copy the file again there so now when I will go to the, the directory This is the new file for the Kate editor. Now I will restart the editor. And open the file again. Now I believe I will have the syntax uh, known to the editor so I can configure it here in the assembler in the types and I will search for the Z80 no no why no yeah it is here so it is it did find it in the in the folder but I haven't seen it in the open safe configuration let me check it one more time okay so now we did find it for me I, I was just blind probably and uh, so this will open by default uh, th this will highlight by default files with uh, these extensions indentation mode default that's fine highlighting and it's all good and uh, yeah I will raise its priority so it will win over the other assembler and I will maybe no I will not assign any particular file type that's fine so now I have the syntax highlighting which is specialized for the for the SJ assembler class and uh, and thus uh, understand the Z80 assembler instruction too. Uh, also like highlighting the uh, unofficial undocumented of codes by different color and, and similar things okay so that's that's the way how I like to edit the assembler projects for ZX Spectrum X and uh, once I'm in this editor uh, I want uh, of course also to build the file and see if it works and if it does assemble so uh, There is the build uh, plugin for uh, for Kate editor, and uh, this is the default installation. So there is no no build yet. So I will check the plugin settings and try to try to pick up some of them which I like for my own usage. this one build plugin I sometimes uh, I did try to use uh, ctex to help uh, the autocomplete autocomplete feature to fill up the label names and similar but it doesn't work as well as I expected so I will probably try without it right now and is there something else I want to add Yeah, that's all for the moment. So now I did enable the build plugin. 
and here it is in the menu and yeah you can start with some targets so here is build output okay so so far I have no target here so I will add a new target new set of targets so okay so I first have to add a new set of targets and uh, it does start uh, yeah, like it does propose the make file builds but I will not use these um, I will just just remove them for the moment and edit this one to use SJ assembler plus and uh, I will add uh, some command line options first is uh, full path to to use full part of files for error reporting and similar uh, this will be important when you want to parse error messages and uh, click on them to just land into the correct file so that's uh, that's one of the options I tend to use then there is no logo I think uh, I will probably check in the command line what are the options yeah, here is no logo that's fine the messaging uh, I will switch to warnings only uh, which is less verbose mode so the output is not as big as as default yeah and that's it for the moment and I will now use the the special symbol for the Kate uh, editor which is uh, percent n for current file name without suffix actually no I, I will actually do the current file yeah, current file so this is the build rule how to how to launch the assembler for particular file I have uh, in the uh, window I'm editing so now I now I did select the rule and I will hit build selected target and build fail uh, sjsm plus not found yeah because that's the that's the shell bin sh shell which I, I set up the local paths uh, in in my bash rc and uh, the shell the regular bound shell doesn't read the bash rc so let's fix it let's fix it somehow for example I will check what's in my profile file which technically could be run by shell but it is not because if it would be run it would understand the path and uh, yeah that's that's not something I like okay so let's do it the other way let's uh, do the uh, 
let's do the path uh, extension also for for regular shell because I I'm not sure if I can configure Kate let's let's do one more thing is there the default shell somewhere and uh, general no Actions, no plugins probably no yeah, project external tools maybe and show script no, that's the more advanced stuff. No file system browser, that's fine. That's okay. Terminal settings, that's also fine. Okay. Okay, I actually don't know how to configure the build plugin to use bash shell instead of instead of regular shell. Maybe I could do the bash. Yeah. Okay. Now, now it's bash, but it doesn't read my config, so I didn't help myself too much, right? Hmm. Okay. So let's see if the no. I would need to to search a bit longer how to set up paths are for this plugin so I will do it the other way I will do it uh, with full path to the assembler alright let's build it now yeah here we go it's trying to build the bash rc file and it didn't go well surprisingly as it's not a assembler file but I did want to build this one and build completed without problems and I have here empty output because I switched so many things off that I don't see anything so let's make it a bit a bit more fair balls Yeah, this is this is the full output, but it's actually uh, causing the Kate editor to parse these informal messages as errors. So it's reporting two errors even when there was none. So that's why I usually use the less verbal setting. Mm, okay, like this. And now you can write your assembly project for ZX Spectrum next or for classic ZX Spectrum. And uh, the nice part about this is uh, that, uh, for example, if I write some, some invalid instruction and uh, the build, uh, the last selected target build is uh, oh, doesn't have shortcut yet but I I usually set it up let's set it up to have the shortcut if I can remember how I did that Oh, 
application, cache application settings. No, oh, okay, I, I now don't remember how Oh, here is configure shortcut. So I will do the shift F10, which is my preferred shortcut for this one. And now when I will do shift F10, uh, it has it has found five ear errors, and the Kate will parse the errors. And allow me to to jump directly where where the error happened. So it's in file main ASM 52 53 line unrecognized unrecognized instruction invalid. But it also the SJ assembled plus is also uh, also pointing out that this was emitted from from here because it's inside the macro it's not in regular source code so it's telling me uh, and it's emitted from multiple places so this is how you can navigate to the errors quickly in the Kate editor I will delete this one and I will open some include like for example constants which is two directories up yeah. and if I will put some invalid instruction here and return back to the main file hit build yeah, so it will say uh, another copy of instruction invalid and it I if I click on the error message it will take me here at the problem place and that's already already the parsed output but if I will check the original output from SJ assembler plus you can see there's full path included so the editor then knows uh, then knows where the error happened If, if I would remove the full path option and go to the main SM let's build it so it's telling me it's invalid instruction invalid in constant constant ASM but it will not jump into the file because it doesn't know where it is because it's missing the part in the error report so let's turn this back and on here where is the problem I will fix it, build again, build completed. Now when I will check the files here, here is the snapshot file which is created just now. I can delete it and, and rebuild it one more time to, to show you that now there is no snapshot. I will hit build. I will hear a refresh. No, no, it's not there. Oh, because I'm building constant constants. That's not what I did want to build. I wanted to build main ASM. Okay, and he here is the new snapshot. So that's the way how I'm how I'm programming things for ZX Spectrum next. And uh, I'm checking my notes if I did forget about something important.
Yeah. Uh, there is one more thing I tend to use a lot, and that's the listing file. The listing file from the assembler can show you many uh, many things about the produce machine code. So you can verify that the assembler did the right job and all instructions are as they should be. So yeah, it's not a list, it should be LST only, the shortcut. So I will configure it to take just the name of the main file, use the LST extension and add uh, also the label table at the end of the file. And let's try it out. Do the main file build. It did build. Now when I check here in the folder, here is main LST, the listing file. If I open it and uh, well, this is this is what is produced during the build process like uh, you can see here all the lines which were assembled and uh, particular file open and closed uh, line number in the file and uh, address in the Z80 memory in the ZX spectrum where, where the bytes will land and for the instructions like here is disable interrupt instruction it will show the machine code of the instruction so if you have some suspicion that something is assembling differently than you expected you can always check this file the listing file and uh, compare everything uh, with your expectations and with your with your assumptions and uh, sometimes it helps to find out some issues with your source code or syntax Yeah, for, for example, one of the common issues, uh, let's do it here around the start, is that you will do, for example, some, some simple math and you are too cautious, so you will add, uh, add uh, some extra parentheses around it. Now we did build well, no error, and you did want to put uh, 1238 into the register A, which would not work well because that's just a bit register. Now, if I will check the listing file, I will search for the for the line. Yeah, this is this is three byte of code which uh, if you are familiar with the Z80 of course you know this is not LD, uh, LDA value but this is LDA value from memory address and this is the address 400 D6 in hexadecimal so that's because I did add the parentheses extra so that was my mistake now if I will fix it by uh, making it obvious to the assembler that this is not memory but just parentheses and build it again uh, two things will happen one thing is that now it's the two byte opcode as expected loading just just simple value into the A register and that uh, SJ assembler tools will remind me that the value is too big to fit into regis register A and it's, it does truncate it so instead of 
400d6 only the d6 value is loaded into register A ok so that was the listing file and yeah that's that's uh, probably all I did want to show about uh, how I how I write the ZX Spectrum Next software on the Linux PC uh, just uh, for fun uh, as this is my new machine so I'm still like figuring out uh, what it does and how well so this is uh, back to the assembler project and uh, and I actually I don't so I did clean the project completely and now I will time the full rebuild of the project uh, allowing it for 20 jobs for example and let's see how well the TDA slim book with the AMD Ryzen 7 will, will fail and that's it two seconds to rebuild full assembler uh, it's it's a 16 core CPU so we did use in reality 21 seconds of time but uh, but in parallel so uh, uh, having parallel time is very nice unfortunately I personally have just single lifetime so uh, this is all uh, see you next time in next video I think I will do the next video about building ZX Spectrum Next emulator on this machine so I can finally also test the results of, of these assembler builds on my machine and see how well this machine will run the, the emulator which I think the first one I will try will be the Zessa Roots mm, done by Cesar Hernandez Baño and uh, it's uh, it's quite nice emulator for classic ZX Spectrums but uh, for the ZX Spectrum Next it's quite uh, demanding on the on the PC power so it will be nice benchmark for this notebook if it can hold up to its requirements so see ya next time again if you have any questions about some particular detail how i set up my my machine and how i use it just write me down in the comments or on the discord and uh, uh, i will try to help you yeah because it's always fun to have more people who are trying out some things in assembly I, I just like assemble programmers okay bye